All right, we are recording. Hi there. We are. I'm Alan I'll... Levine, and I'm coming to you from um, uh, the far, far western cohort for Ontario Extend, <laughs> Saskatchewan, so we playing with geography. And I'm really excited to have David Porter here, um, not only the, the leader of the project, but also uh, the person behind the writing of the Gallery Module. And we thought we'd just have a conversation about it, maybe to help frame it for people. So good morning. Sure. Good afternoon, David. How you doing, Alan? Are you in Moose Jaw? Yeah, I'm in Moose Jaw right now. In the oh, <laughs> I drove through there on my way west from British Columbia to Ontario to take on this job. So I have fond memories of Moose Jaw. It's a great place, and so it is. On your on your way back now, you have another stop on. There you so, go. I'm glad to see you. Uh, so, so, what was some of the thinking or, or the ideas uh, behind Gallery uh, So, I think one of the uh, things that's behind the scholar module. It's obviously one of the attributes of the empowered educator from the Simon Bates framework that we're using. Um, but it's the one that I, I think is the hardest for most educators to get into. Um, has a lot to do with um, their confidence level and the amount of time they have to actually do a bit of a deep dive into their own teaching and learning and the needs of students in their classes. Um, I get the feeling that people tinker around the edges and, and kind of change things from semester to semester to see if it improves or, or works better for students. Uh, but it's rare that people take a, a formal approach to it and really do it in a way that uh, makes a lot of sense. And so the example I used in the module was my own sort of trepidation of teaching large scale lectures with lots of students all armed with tech. and. How do you make that exciting and interesting for them? How do you engage them in learning? How do you help them become constructors of knowledge when you're standing at the front of a 200 seat amphitheater? Like it's, it's not straightforward. Um, while I was at Simon Fraser University, um, there was an ongoing scholarship to teaching and learning project taking place around flipped classrooms for calculus. Um, and I found that really intriguing because that was one of the subjects when I was in university that was just a killer. It's like I didn't ever want to go to those classes. They were, you know, like tough stuff and boring and not really, really helpful in terms of getting you over the problems. And they had taken a really interesting approach using video and, and it, uh, it just seemed very structured. They'd thought about it, they'd planned for it, they'd evaluated their own performance, and it seemed like a really great model uh, for some instructors. Um, so that was one of the things that got me interested in the whole scholarship approach because they were tackling a tough subject in high enrollment classes. And I wondered if it could be easier for people with smaller classes and other discipline areas to get in. So we tried to look for resources um, that talk to scholarship of teaching and learning. And we tried to structure the unit uh, over a number of initiatives so that people could think about a problem, think about refining the problem, think about writing it down and planning the steps, and then coming up with a kind of a plan for execution. And one of the key ingredients was the notion of including uh, a peer, someone else you could talk to about your project so that you were getting some critical friend feedback. And that's not something that everybody's comfortable with, but seems to be a real um, helpful component of solid projects. Yeah, I like that, that attribute. And I almost was thinking how, um, uh, you're driven by, and I, I think I've had some examples like you, you have to teach in a new modality and you have to figure out um, some, some just not only logistical, but also pedagogical things that, that you want to change. And so, you know, it might be different for someone who, who's, you know, in, in a class they've done several times and where do they figure out what to do to look at. And uh, I got a sense too, like picking the scale, like some people seem to think it needs to be something really big. Yeah. And I don't think it needs to be big. It doesn't. It doesn't. And one of the tools that we offered as part of the module was UBC's scholarship of teaching and learning framework, where you could go in and get a sense of what kinds of projects other people were doing. There were models. What kind of language were they using to describe it? What kind of scale was it being undertaken within? 
So we're trying to model all of the processes for people to give them enough tools to select a project. And, and interestingly, while I was in California last week, I got an email from an instructor in one of the colleges who were part of the Summer Institute last year, and she knows we're going to be offering a scholarship fund um, very soon, and she wanted to know what would make a good project. And so I, I had to kind of work her back through and say, go to the module, think about these things, and what's your discipline, and take a look at what's already been done in your discipline area. It was, it was more about modeling what's already been done than trying to help them come up with something fresh. Even if you replicate something someone else has done, it gets you into the pattern. Sure. And I think, I don't know, do you think people get hooked up and like it needs to be like a paper, like a scholarship, like a big research? Um, yeah. Because I some people just went to start right, rightfully so talking about like ethics of student data. It's like, wait a minute, we're not even having to talk about student data yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I think I think if we could find more small scale kinds of examples, it would probably help people to um understand how to get in there and maybe the example from sfu that i use as one of the core examples may be too big but it shows everything they did from some little videos they produced to them talking about what they did to actual research papers they wrote it sort of gave them the whole gamut of possibility and maybe that's too much for some folks maybe it scares them off rather than attracts them I don't know, you know, the structure of the module really scaffolds everything out in terms of yeah. what they should do. I, I like it how they're, you know, designed to have, uh, you know, a, a Google Drive, a directory of examples where people can see and add their own. So there's a lot to it. Yeah. I mean, I think we tried our best to get it as right as possible the first time, knowing that we'll probably need to revise it. And but I, my sense is that few people have actually tried it. So the the amount of data we'll collect on that module is probably going to be pretty sparse. Yeah, but in many ways, it seems to me um, ideal as um, as kind of like a capstone for uh, the experience is to um, is to try out some of these approaches, investigate the research, and do some activities, and then put it into play. Um, something like yeah look at it as a, as a micro research project. yeah and I, I mean that's the way we structured it at the summer institute and that's how we've structured it through ontario extend east it was the last module that people came to so it was a kind of a capstone and it was project based it was do it if you feel you can um and maybe we need some incentives further incentives for people who actually take the scholarship module and, and try to move it out i don't know what those incentives would be but maybe um, there is one, and clearly the person from the north who contacted me was looking ahead and said, hey, I see this fun coming. This is my chance to execute on that. But, you know, even like the, you know, the case examples, having, you know, building a collection of some sort of work that people have done. Yeah, that would be great. I mean, if those could be part of, I don't know if it's the activity bank. It's more like a, a collection of uh, curated projects, right? Yeah. Yeah, where people could see the whole collection and use them as examples. Yeah. I mean, I've I've always seen modeling as the the most powerful teaching and learning strategy. It's just emulate what someone else did and move it into your own kind of context, and that really always seems to work. So if I'm taking on this module and I'm just spinning my wheels, what would be your recommendation? Yeah, I think uh, the first recommendation would be to do just a simple Google search to find an action research project in your field of study. Like, what are people doing in biology education to help students learn better? And I think that UBC catalog of projects is invaluable to me because when I go through it, I see, oh man, these, these are from tiny to big. And from really focused, you know, one part of the course to a general strategy that people are using in their course. So it's, it's multidimensional. And um, maybe would, there needs to be more talk about that in the module, that the dimensions can be micro or macro. Um, and give explicit examples of micro and explicit examples of macro. So those are things I've been thinking about as I go forward.
that's great. So um, uh, thank you for taking the time. Hopefully this video will help to give people um, some more uh, comfort or inspiration uh, and not, and, and to really, I mean, this for them, you know, there's a lot. It is. And when you learn new stuff or you find out something that you're doing really works, um, it'd be great to tell others about it. And sometimes um, it really is something that you've thought about strategically. You haven't written down. It's just been ruminating in your head and you're ready to express it. And I think people should get more adventuresome about that. That's why we have the experimenter module. It's like, go for it. Try something new. Yeah. Same is true with the research. Yeah, I, I love, I don't know if you saw Joanne's post this week for the experiment module. She used making mud pies, as an not it? <laughs> It's a good metaphor. It is. Well, thank you very much for your time. You're Dave. welcome. Appreciate it. Take care, Al.